around five or six. You know, that's the temptation that Brand, Michael, and John and I share because we want to stay up late. We want to get up early. We want to dive into this book. And the fact is, we only have about two talks apiece, and we've got about eight or ten per verse to share. And that's why I think it's so right for them to all, all of us to mention today, the additional when I walked down the basement steps to a chapel on campus at Marquette. I had been studying the early fathers for the last couple of years, reading the ancient liturgies in a doctoral seminar I was taking that fall semester. I was still an evangelical Protestant. I was still officially credentialed as a Presbyterian minister, but all these things were coming up Catholic. And so I wanted to move from the theoretical to the practical. I had never been to a Mass. I never really wanted to go. But finally, curiosity got the best of me, and so there I was, walking down the steps, right past one of your holy water fonts. And I wasn't even about to do and genuflect or anything else. I just sat there in the back with my Bible and a notebook, just jotting observations, thinking I'd be alone. Well, a number of people, housewives and businessmen, came in. It was lunchtime. And then a priest came out, and everybody stood except for me. And after the opening rite, the penitential rite, that I had been reading in the ancient liturgy of the church, Hippolytus especially the week before, these were the things that I was hearing. I came wondering if any residue might remain, and I discovered very quickly that almost the entire substance of the ancient liturgy was this. All we've got to do as Catholics is go to Mass, and heaven is where we are. And the angels and the saints are present with us, whether we know it or not, that's just a good reason to come to discover the mystery of faith, the reality of the Mass. We don't make it up. We don't project it with our warm, fuzzy feelings and faith. Our faith grasps the reality. And it's there whether we know it or not, whether we believe it or not. And this is not something new. It's not something that was first discovered back in 988 by the emissaries for Prince Lauda who have focused on the woman clothed with the sun and the liver of feet clothed with 12 stars. Because she is sort of the opposite. She is sort of the antidote. And you can even drop a sword in She is. So in Revelation 11, as Brad explains so well, everybody would be asking, where is it? How do we get it? What condition is it in? But as soon as John has announced what he has seen, the Ark of the Covenant, he just moves right along into the very next verse where he describes this heavenly sign. The woman clothed the sun who under her feet crowned with twelve The person of Jesus Christ, who himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is our truth. He is truth itself. He is the incarnation of the truth that is lived and found in the Holy Trinity. The truth. But it tells us, especially on this Saturday in which we honor the Blessed Mother, that we should never forget the Marian profile of the Church. It is that profile that receives the truth, that treasures the Word of God in her life and lives it out in her daily existence. There are two sides to proclaim 